Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Holiday Planning for 2016. Before we get started, I'd just like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's webinar. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the questions pane on the control panel on the upper right hand side of your screen. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation and we'll collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. We will be recording today's session and a copy will be sent out to all who registered. Our speaker today is John Fetto, Senior Research and Marketing Analyst for Hitwise. Today's presentation will cover top shopping days in 2015, key dates to look out for in 2016, mobile search themes in retail, trending gifts, and taking an audience-centric approach. Over to you, John. Thanks, Keisha, and thanks for joining us today, everyone. Um, let's just jump right in by looking at the visits during the last two holiday seasons to our Hitwise Retail 500, which is a collection of the top 500 uh, online retail sites. Last year in the United States, Americans paid about 11.5 billion visits to the Retail 500 during the, the holiday season, which includes the months of November and December. And this was about a 25% increase over the 9.2 billion visits that we registered during the 2014 season. That boils down to just over a billion visits every week with the week of Thanksgiving and the week of Cyber Monday generating what we saw were the greatest levels of, of traffic during the season. Now, let's look at that day by day. Uh, the first big news from, from last year is that Thanksgiving Day unseated Cyber Monday as the biggest online shopping day of the year. Um, there were a record 328.7 million visits uh, made to the Hitwise, Hitwise Retail 500 on Thanksgiving Day alone last year. Of course, uh, it was still a really close race with Black Friday racking up about 328.5 million visits and Cyber Monday getting another 320.7 million. And of course, while consumers were, were probably more likely to be engaging in, in, you know, in shopping recon missions on Thanksgiving Day rather than actually completing transactions, um, you know, the importance of Thanksgiving Day shouldn't be underestimated because it's then that you know, a lot of consumers are making decisions about where, when, and how they're going to be shopping and what they're going to buy during you know, what we all know is the biggest retail stretch of the year. Um, secondly, to point out peak week, uh, which is what we call the, you know, basically the week uh, including Wednesday before Thanksgiving to Cyber Tuesday was, was absolutely huge last year. Uh, every single day of that week, in fact, registered as one of the top 10 uh, busiest shopping days of the season. And you know, Mondays were still, of course, the biggest day of every week, uh, but we saw last year a continued continuation of a trend where, where consumers were shopping deeper into the week. And, and in fact, Wednesdays and Thursdays, you can see um, on that blue line that they, the levels re maintained fairly consistent throughout the week uh, to the point where Wednesdays and Thursdays were holding at about 95% of the, of the levels that we observed on Mondays. So what that means is that you know, consumers are shopping deeper in the week and that gives retailers uh, you know, more opportunity to engage them closer to the time than they're heading back into the stores, which you know, is really provides a more seamless opportunity to tie their online and in-store campaigns together without them feeling uh, so disconnected. So that's the overview of traffic, but let's talk about some other key dates to plan around if you're, if you're looking for other opportunities besides just sale events to, uh, to engage customers. Um, we'll, we'll look at the, the time when, when email marketing starts first. Um, for the most part, e marketers are starting to send um, more emails slowly throughout the month uh, of November, but what we notice is really the retailers started in earnest their holiday campaigns the week of Black Friday. Um, of the top 10 email days of the season, six uh, revolved around Black Friday and Cyber Monday or, or the day after Christmas, but Black Friday and Thanksgiving Day were, were really the top two days of the season where, where retailers were hitting uh, customers with email. Small Business Saturday, which uh, is November 26th, uh, has what I think is probably achieved, like become a household phrase for many of us, uh, which may explain why searches last year in 2015 uh, we're actually down from what we observed in 2014. I think people know when, are starting to recognize when Small Business, Small Business Saturday is. They're not needing to look that up as much. Um, but we do still see that um, 
that on Small Business Saturday itself, it searches for, for Small Business Saturday accounted for about one in every 6,000 online inquiries, uh, which is pretty, it's pretty impressive. Green Monday is another um, kind of manufactured holiday uh, that was originally linked to eBay, but um, is being adopted more, more broadly now. And last year, I think we saw more retailers uh, promoting Green Monday sales. Um, and, and this is officially falls on the second Monday of December, which or at least 10 days before Christmas. And, and this year, that day is, is December 12th. Last year, interest was actually growing over 2014, uh, but just as a point of comparison, Green Monday is, is really just about a third or even half uh, of what we, we registered for Small Business Saturday. So it, it's got a bit of a ways to go before it gains recognition as a household name or household phrase. So if you are trying to use this date um, as an excuse to drive sales, you, you, you may need to invest a little bit of, of energy explaining what it is to customers who may not really be familiar with it. Um, gift guides are another increasingly helpful tool uh, for shoppers who are looking for ideas, uh, and 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 they're they're they really do offer a good opportunity for our non-retail marketers out there. You know, publishers can can leverage gift guides as a way to engage their readers with uh, relevant seasonal content. Uh, and now that you know, shoppers are are becoming used to seeing gift guides in, in online, they're they're actually starting to seek them out more and more. Uh, in fact, gift guide searches last uh, last year were about 42% higher than we saw in 2014, and you know I would expect them to be even even bigger this this holiday season. Um, gift guide searches they typically begin to rise, you know, as early as the, the first week of November, but they they really reach their peak in the last full week before Christmas. Uh, so giving opportunity throughout the holiday season to to provide gift guides. Um, and with more online orders obviously being placed every year. That means that consumers are getting anxious about, about delivery status. Um, visits to some of the top shipping companies like FedEx and UPS and the Postal Service and what have you grew um, by over 50% last December over 2014. Um, peak online package tracking really occurred last year and even the year before around the 22nd of, de of December. So as those nervous you know, gift givers are really looking to find out you know, when or if their purchases are, are going to arrive on time. Um, interesting mid midweek is when we see most shipping companies with their highest um, levels of traffic, which makes sense following a, you know, slightly higher level of purchasing occurring on Monday. Give them a couple days and they're, and they're online trying to figure out where or when their package is going to be delivered. Um, and, you know, of course, now we can't control the weather, but one thing we can do is, is just to make sure that, that retailers provide really easy and constant, easy links and constant updates uh, to their shoppers and customers to let them know, you know, exactly what the status of their order is and where it is and when they can expect it. We also uh, have Ugly Christmas Sweater Day. Did you actually know that Ugly Christmas Sweater Day is there's an official day, and it's December 9th? Um, but I don't think a lot of a lot of a lot of shoppers really get the memo because we see um, a lot of a growing level of searches for ugly sweaters growing all the way through kind of that that last weekend before before Christmas. So there's an opportunity for you know, for marketers to leverage us. In the UK, it's actually um, ugly, ugly Christmas Jumper Day, or Christmas Jumper Day, rather, um, and it's tied to uh, tied to Save the Children charity, and it actually does exist in the United States, so it could be an opportunity for marketers to kind of leverage um, ugly Christmas sweaters to drive um, to drive charity donations, or but it also provides them, you know, just plenty of opportunity to just have fun with employees and and. Uh, and guests in their store. Last year, it's always fun to track the, the, the themes of these ugly Christmas sweaters. Star Wars and, and Hotline Bling were really popular, as was Pokemon varieties. Um, of course, with the launch of, of Pokemon Go this year, it's really my, my bet is that that's going to be the hottest uh, ugly Christmas sweater this year. Uh, next, we have um, gift cards, and of course, last-minute shoppers turn to gift cards when they don't have anything else, and electronic options are becoming the norm, um, and as such, their gift card purchases are being pushed off 
you know, even more to the last minute because if you're on your way to to see someone, you can literally be downloading a card to give them um, on your way. So it's no surprise that we see peak activity occurring in the final hours of the year on Christmas Eve and on Christmas Day. Um, in fact, on Christmas uh, Day, we're seeing even more, more and more activity uh, occurring, and not and and not just of people purchasing gift cards, but also there's a growing trend in people going on to different sites to find out if they can exchange or trade or swap the gift cards that they've received. So it's important, be, you know, as you as you work to pivot your way to you know to post Christmas sales to not you know give up too quickly um, on promoting gift cards. And then finally, we see that Christmas Day is when you know all those gadgets and gizmos that people have received as gifts really come to life. Um, that are going to be busy downloading driver software and apps and 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 everything to make the most uh, of those gifts. In fact, we saw that searches for you know download and activate were thirty percent higher on Christmas Day than they are a, a week prior. So. Again, even as, you, as you're working on those post-Christmas email campaigns, don't forget to um, make, uh, make way to engage the, your new customers to make sure that they can come back for more. Of course, you know, everyone wants to know who's getting all the traffic around Christmas and, and holiday season, and the short answer really is, is Amazon. Uh, in December last year, over a third of the visits to our Hitwise Retail 500 were to Amazon, up from uh, just over a quarter uh, in December in 2014. In fact, when we looked look at the growth of Amazon year over year during in December, we, we found that the growth alone um, accounts to accounts for roughly twice the, the amount of traffic that that Walmart received in a month. So so Amazon's growth equals roughly two WalMarts, which is just you know amazing. Um, and as we see. Retailers like Amazon grow, and Walmart is still capturing a really decent share uh, of the market. I will add that our Hitwise clients can can start to get more in depth insights by working with our custom team to start to split out the traffic in some of these larger retailers at a category level. You know, so for instance, if you if you are are, tra are selling just shoes or another type of product, we can go into into these retailers and and segment out each of those departments to only to compare Amazon's shoe sales to shoe sales at Walmart or with your own uh, your own traffic. Um, so so keep that in mind when you're trying to figure out you know which 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 uh, brands are make the most sense to be tracking throughout the season. Um, now back to the chart. I wanted to add that you know most of the sites that we're tracking um, posted growth over year over year, despite the fact that they lost market share just because of the the growth of Amazon. Uh, for instance, we saw Walmart did gain uh, 13.8 million visitor visits in December last year versus a year ago, at, but at the same time they went from a seven percent share down to a six percent share. Um, so keep that in mind. You know, we, it does look like Amazon is is gobbling up a larger share of, of the market, and it is. But there are there is, are a lot of growth stories happening in terms of, of just number of visits. Um, now, next, I will look at like a couple of retailers that we saw post some some significant growth year over year, and this is in terms of both visitors and market share. So these may be ones that you want to keep your eye on heading into the season this year. Um, most of the brands that posted the biggest growth year over year were electronics retailers. Uh, Newegg, for instance, uh, was ranked 27th uh, in 2014, and they moved up to an eighth uh, position in 2015 and increased uh, their their share by 238 um, percent. So it's a really successful story. Other retailers like Adorama. Uh, Micro Center, Think Geek, B&H Photo, Fitbit and Fries um, also did really well. Uh, Non-electronic sites like Sur La Table and Cheaper, did, Cheaper Than Dirt, which, um, which specializes in gun and ammunition sales, um, also did well. And I should add that um, you know this this chart here is looking at December versus December because uh, it does we do see some seasonal differences. But I did look at all of these ten retailers that you see on your screen and saw that they've all um, more or less held on to those gains, and and some like Cheaper Than Dirt and Adorama have grown even more. Um, before moving on, though, I will add uh, that. Last year, our clients were really interested in hearing what uh, was happening with Jet.com. Um, some of them were nervously asking what was happening with it. And, and after the launch, we did see some, some impressive growth rates with, with, for the site, which really uh, hit their peak in the months of December and January. Um, 
However, since then, since January, we've seen visits really decline or remain flat for Jet.com. And as of June, the site was ranked um, number 36 in the Hitwise Retail 500. And unless they have plans for um, a holiday push, they're probably going to um, you know, remain around that same spot and not present a, a, a new serious threat to, to the current status of, of the market share. Um, now let's look at where um, where all this traffic is coming from, uh, because it's important in terms of driving new business. Search is, is obviously still by far the top driver of traffic to top retail sites. And, and last December, we saw 45% of referred traffic coming from, from a search engine, which is up even from 41% a year earlier. Uh, but the you know bigger story I think is social media sites where we're driving a 21 percent greater share of traffic to retailers and that's and that's probably due to the incorporation of things like the buy now button and other kind of call to action options in social media and and you know this growth is important because in 2014 when we we're reporting the traffic trends we saw that social media was starting to drive even less traffic to retailers so there's that's a, a nice turnaround that we saw last year and and social media is continuing to drive even more visits since since December to retail sites um, multimedia sites like YouTube also drove an increasing share of traffic and as you know retailers are becoming more and more savvy using video to drive traffic um, it allows even some you know YouTube will even allow you to complete transactions through YouTube itself uh, so it's an interesting uh, channel to to be looking at Newegg is is one retailer last year that we saw doing especially well uh, from getting traffic from multimedia sites and other retailers that did better than expected include GameStop um, and Sephora and Victoria's Secret. So if you're looking to uh, to model your multimedia campaign off of some successful retailers, those are a few to take a look at. Now let's switch gears and and look at and look at mobile. Um, as of about two weeks ago, uh, we saw the Hitwise Retail 500 sites were receiving about 46% of their online visits from, uh, from mobile devices, which includes smartphones and tablets. Uh, that's about 28% higher than the all industry average. So, you know, retailers are ahead of the game already when it comes to handling mobile visits. And, and this may be the first holiday season where we get um, close to or exceeding um, the, the point where the majority of visits are coming from mobile devices um, overall. Of course, there are a few uh, sub-industries where we see uh, a majority of visits are already coming from mobile sites, and those would include um, the intimate apparel subsector, subcategory, as well as baby products. And probably the next ones that will cross a crossover into to mobile dominance will be, uh, you know, health and beauty and, and grocery and alcohol sectors. And so uh, these are an, other industries to watch. Of course, uh, you know, we're talking about traffic becoming more increasingly mobile, but transactions still are largely occurring on desktop devices. Uh, Connexity estimates that this holiday season, about 40% of uh, web-based purchases or online purchases will be uh, made on mobile phones or tablets this Christmas season or this holiday season. For so, for retailers that are looking to really uh, you know raise their mobile conversion rates, it's you know they need to prioritize. Uh, the experience of making it more seamless on mobile uh, to from from browsing to checkout. Retailers also should uh, you know support other mobile needs which center around um, those most common shopping activities and you can see those on your screen here uh, by by improving you know, really like the browsing experience on these mobile devices across you know, smartphones and tablets, making the prices easier and more visible to find and, and delivering product information and store reviews on, on, on mobile devices. Marketers and retailers can you know, really make sure that they're um, paving the way for a more you know, natural mobile transaction experience. And one of the key ways that they can that they can address the mobile needs of their customers is by providing mobile optimized content around the topics that customers are you know most heavily searching for from their mobile devices. And here on your screen, you'll see some of the findings from our latest mobile search report uh, that you can download from our site, which shows some of the themes uh, of retail searches that skew the most heavily towards mobile devices. Uh, for instance, eighty-two percent of searches for that 
for 24 hour are initiated by our, you know, hours and time, opening times related searches. Um, they typically skew mobile, and, and, and that tells us that shoppers are really looking for this information after they've, they've already left home. So, so retailers need to make this information you know, really easy to find on their mobile sites and other listing services that they partner with. Um, surprise purchases, too, are really heavily mobile. I guess it shouldn't be that much of a surprise to us, but um, you don't, if you're buying something that's a, you know, supposed to be kept under wraps, you don't want to necessarily search for that or, or, or shop for that on a computer that you're sharing with the person who, who may be the recipient of it. Um, it's, in fact, searches for engagement rings, for instance, are initiated on a mobile device 82% of the time, according to our research. Um, so again, as we head into the Christmas holiday season, it's probably a time when you know more surprise purchases are taking place. So as people put together their their shopping list, they might be reaching first for their mobile phones uh, to do that, so that they don't risk any any spoils. Uh, review searches are also you know happening happening more heavily on a mobile phone with shoppers searching for information on products, likely while they're already in a store and making a decision whether or not to purchase something or deciding to purchase one product over a competitor. Uh, so brands should they, they need to not only be a, a, a trusted provider of this information, which would keep them within their ecosystem if they're in their store. Um, but they also need to make sure that they're taking a mobile approach when when designing this type of content. Coupon searches and deal seeking in general, um, it's obviously huge, but it's also hugely mobile. Uh, shoppers are looking for deals and coupons, and, and now you know they don't even need a physical coupon to start saving some extra money at the register. Uh, so if you are in the game of you know offering coupons um, and, and and other types of discounts, uh, you you need to be aware that shoppers are looking for them while they're in the aisles of your store. And if your competitor is on top of their game, they could be luring your shoppers uh, to them by offering them a competing uh, a competing offer. So you need to make sure that your mobile or your discount and coupon campaigns are really heavily targeted towards mobile devices. Um, and finally, another point I wanted to add before moving on is that searches like for things like layaway. Um, are initiated on mobile devices about 89% of the time. And, and this is a part of a larger trend that we saw within the report across different sectors. And that's that, um, you know, searches for products and, and services and other things that are more heavily used by those who may be struggling financially or less well off um, are among those themes that are most heavily skewing towards mobile devices. And that's really because um, you know, if, if someone has limited funds, they may not have internet at home or a computer, and instead they're relying primarily or solely, right, on their smartphone to access the internet. So if you are trying to, to reach this audience and engage them, you need to, to know that their primary, if not their sole device for, for engaging with your, your brand online is going to be mobile. So let's look at some of the product trends. It's obviously early. Um, in the season, people haven't started necessarily shopping for Christmas products just yet. So what we're going to do is look back and see what we saw last year and combine that with some additional research to kind of give us an early read on what might be popular this year. Um, there was a th These were the top products for 2015 that you're looking at on your screen. And there was a pretty wide range of products uh, on our list, including Fitbit, which was on the list, uh, you know, top of the list for the entire season. Uh, it's, it's actually poised to be just as big this year. Um, likewise, Uggs, which if you've been doing business with Hitwise for a while, you'll know that Uggs used to be our previously reigning Hawk product champ for years and years, um, as long as I've worked with the group at Hitwise. Um, we're, Uggs are almost always certain to return. Um, part of that is driven by a seasonal boost in, in boot search, boot purchases, and Uggs are one of the most popular brands, but we see it as a really hot product every year. Um, the Pie Face game was definitely one of last season's uh, hottest newcomers, having appeared pretty much out of nowhere, uh, thanks to a viral video. Um, but that's the type of toy or product that's generally, you know, in the category of, of maybe a one-hit wonder, so it's unlikely that that game's going to be quite as big this year. It may still do pretty well, um, but I don't necessarily expect it to be in our top ten list, for sure. Um, but, you know, it could be proven wrong, if, of course. Um, but it's likely to be replaced by something that we haven't even heard of just yet. Um, Keurig was one of last year's hottest products, uh, but it's it's actually been losing a little bit of steam, no pun intended. Um, but over the last year, we do we have seen 
um, new entrants to this cat to to the coffee brewing system category um, actually making it um, kind of a theme or a, a, a common purchase beyond just the Keurig brand. So you know, co companies like the like Ninja with their Coffee Ninja Bar are kind of uh, creating challenges for for Keurig, but you know, may ultimately just um, drive even more dollars into this into this niche uh, product. Um, so so it'll probably be hot again this season. Um, even if Keurig isn't quite as big, um, and, and next we see we saw that hot Xbox One and PlayStation Four were were still really hot last year, despite the fact that it was their third holiday season uh, with no dates for new models announced. Um, these are probably these these will still be the leading consoles, um, but I would expect sales around them to cool off as you know most people who have who have. Who would have bought one of these consoles have already done so. What I expect instead we'll see is is um, an expansion of sales on you know ancillary devices and accessories around them like expansion drives and some of the elite controllers. I think they're going to start to take um, take the lead this 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 holiday season. Um, now next we can look at some of the trending products last year, which will give us an idea of what might be continuing to trend this year. Um, I don't think that hoverboard, uh, given the the problems with the batteries um, catching on fire and people falling off of them, I think it's unlikely it's going to be this one of this year's hottest products. Um, it might still do okay, but I don't think it'll be quite as hot this year. Um, again, the Coffee Ninja Bar is probably going to do even better this year, creating a, you know driving more traffic to that category. Um, the Yeti line of coolers and cups and tumblers and everything has getting, been getting more attention, especially during the hotter summer months, but those cups work equally as well at keeping things hot. Um, so they might do pretty well again this Christmas and holiday season. Um, and finally, um, you know, we saw the release of the Ocular, Oculus Rift um, just after the holiday season last year. But I think that it, uh, I would expect virtual reality devices, headsets ranging from you know the entry level Google Cardboard up to the more sophisticated products like that Oculus Rift to be getting more attention and perhaps taking some of those dollars um, that gamers would have spent on a new console if there was one and 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 taking that away uh, and gobbling those up. So keep an eye on on VR devices. Um, another way to kind of get an early read on what products are going to be hot this year is to take a look at what people were searching for um, on Amazon on Prime Day. Uh, a few weeks ago, obviously, Amazon held their second annual Prime Day, and uh, Hitwise reported that uh, there were an estimated 81.6 million visits to Amazon on Prime Day, making it the third biggest uh, day of the past year for, for the site after only Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So it's, you know, it's really a practice run for Black Friday, and we can see the products that people are searching for, we're searching for on the site on, on Prime Day are likely to be very similar, if not identical to those that they'll be searching for uh, this upcoming Black Friday. And so we can, we can actually use um, a custom offering at Hitwise to take a look at what people are searching for on different sites. And we did this immediately after Prime Day to see what they were searching for on Amazon. Um, among the top products that shoppers were searching for that day include wireless speakers and wireless headphones or Bluetooth headphones. These have been really mainstays of, of holiday shopping lists the past few years and their strong performance on Prime Day uh, and the falling prices pretty much guarantee that they're going to be strongly competing uh, for our gift dollars this year. Um, among the wireless speakers uh, were was Amazon's Echo as well as a tap and the dot. Uh, with more people obviously enrolling in Prime, thanks to strong performance of Prime Day, uh, this, this smart voice activated speaker is probably going to be another really strong seller this holiday season. Um, but I will say that it's probably going to get some competition from Google's new home speaker, which promises similar features, except for that it's not tied to AMP. It will, will kind of bolt into the Google um, ecosystem. So be interested to see uh, what that actually looks like when it releases and what it costs to see how much of a challenge it gives to Amazon's Echo. Um, as I mentioned, uh, every year Fitbit is a strong performer and, and people are looking for the latest model. So this year uh, the latest model is, is, is Fitbit Alta and the Fitbit Blaze. So expect those to be kind of leading hot products this season. Um, our next electronic um, purchase, it's actually an, 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 a companion to them because we can't seem to really um, unplug ever um, and, and that's so people are starting to look at carrying around you know 
portable chargers and batteries with them and, and portable and these types of portable batteries were among some of the top products that people were searching for on Amazon Prime Day. Um, so I expect them to be pretty popular this year. Um, and finally, you probably had been living under a rock if you didn't re realize that um, Pokemon Go launched a few weeks back. And in fact, um, I wrote in a blog post uh, just last week, that there were about 10 million Americans searching for Pokemon in the first two weeks since the launch. Um, the game is obviously resulted in a resurgence of, of popularity for everything related to Pokemon, uh, which we clearly saw in the Prime Day searches. Um, so you know, be assured that, that Pokemon is going to be really hot this season, and one of the hottest products may be um, the yet-to-be-released, the what, what's called the Pokemon Go Plus. It's a, a wearable smart device that lets uh, the, the, the wearer know when they're by um, important Pokemon locations um, by vibrating. It's... it's, um, it's Supposed to be on sale by the end of the month or at the end of August, and it's uh, it's priced at least at this point at thirty five dollars. So it's another item to keep our eye on. Um, next, we'll look at um, a cat larger category as opposed to a specific device, and and that's the home automation or the smart home market. Um, I think that that this is going to be a market that is going to continue to expand uh, this holiday season. Um, and, and we've seen it grow significantly over the past few years, and it always gets a nice little bump around around Christmas. You can see that on your chart. In fact, uh, in the past two years, we've been tracking um, a portfolio in Hitwise of about 18,000 different variations of some of these leading uh, products, and you'll see you'll see those spikes around 2014 Christmas and 2015 Christmas. Um, but in the last two years, the category has grown by 240 uh, percent. So we're likely to see um, this category expand even more this coming November and December. Um, for those maybe not as familiar with this uh, this category, uh, the top brands in the space um, are on your screen now, and the leading with Nest, which makes um, smart thermostats, smart smoke, and uh, carbon monoxide detectors, as well as cameras. Um, they're owned by Google, so that Google Home speaker might fit uh, or be a very nice companion to some of these products. Um, Amazon Echo claims 12% uh, of the market, Vivint smart home security systems, and we're seeing a lot of, uh, of security systems becoming part of the smart home system. Uh, they claim 5%, Arlos cameras uh, claim 4%, and Philips Hue um, Wi-Fi controlled light bulbs that also change colors. Um, and, and interestingly, they can be synced with popular movies like Sharknado on sci-fi. Um, that claims about 4% of the smart home or home automation market. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So despite the fact that home automation is really still relatively small, uh, retailers, they, they, they are starting to realize the potential of the category and they're trying to get ahead of it. Target um, is one, for instance, that is establishing um, a smart home space in uh, one of their stores in suburban Minneapolis, and they plan to roll them out to locations in Cupertino and, and in Tribeca next. Um, when they're setting up these spaces, they're they're really addressing the fact that a lot of shoppers are are confused about how the devices work, but they also don't know where they're kept in a store. Are they you know is a smart thermostat kept in the home section or is it kept in the electronics section? So, um, what they're doing is they're experimenting with putting all of these devices together in one spot and creating scenarios and educational. Um, uh, experiences where they show them and emphasize how the devices work together, which is more uh, selling the experience as a well, uh, instead of the devices themselves, um, which will ho hopefully uh, help them sell more stuff. Interestingly, we looked at uh, people who were searching for these types of devices and, and profiled them in our audience view platform, and we, we saw that Target is actually not one of the stores uh, that these types of shoppers, uh, consumers, um, shop at at really above average rates. In fact, they're slightly less likely to shop at Target, so it might be a great opportunity for Target to attract some of these new uh, consumers who are pretty attractive from a demographic perspective. They tend to be... Um, disproportionately high income, young and male. So, you know, even if these items don't result in a great amount of sales, you know, if you stock and promote them well, you can attract uh, some of these, you know, really sought after uh, consumers to your store and get them to purchase other things. Um, audience View found that the top large retailers that, that smart home shoppers visit are Home Depot, 
uh, Best Buy, Costco, Lowe's, and Newegg, and, and some of these retailers have already started to dedicate some spaces, albeit often um, small ones, to smart home products. Um, but I think the important takeaway in, in looking at what Target has done, and we've seen this in other stores in, in the UK, is that you know, it's not just enough to stock the items or even uh, dedicate a section to them in the store. You really have to show consumers the value um, and be their guide to in order to get the biggest return. The next theme I think we want to look at um, is especially relevant in the last week, I think, um, is, is subscription boxes. Uh, back in February, we published a report on this subscription box industry and identified it as one to watch. Um, and, uh, you know, in fact, if you've been monitoring the news, you, you saw last week that Unilever is buying Dollar Shave Club for a billion dollars and, and P&G is planning to launch a recurring subscription of their Tide, Tide products. Um, but we've already seen, uh, you know, these, this category growing. In the last three years, uh, we've seen visits to the subscription box sites in the United States, or the leading sites at least, increase by, um, by nearly 1,500%. Um, in June, for instance, uh, Americans made about 22.4 million visits to leading sites. Here's a look at the top companies in the category today. As of last month, uh, the five brands that you see on your screen account for 70% of the visits to the category. So, you know, knowing these players is important. Uh, Loot Crate leads the pack with a, by solid margin with about 4.8 million visits last month, followed by Dollar Shave Club with 3.6 million visits. Uh, Blue Apron, Birch Box, and um, a a new, relatively newer entrant, HelloFresh, is starting to um, to come up in the market quickly and, and provide a challenge to Blue Apron. Um, sorry, I just went the wrong way. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I think these subscription boxes, the, the trend is an important to watch just because of these boxes that you see on your screen, the, these pure play boxes, um, it, because it's also they're also important because traditional retailers are um, are they're starting to take note of the lure of these boxes as I meant, mentioned before um, they're starting to offer their own line lines rather uh, for instance Starbucks a few months ago started offering their own subscription offering for um, it's a Starbucks reserve roastery uh, and they could have gone with something a little bit more convenience oriented but they're looking at something um, they're looking at their Starbucks reserve as kind of a premium uh, offering to introduce coffee lovers to amazing new small lock coffees. Um, back in September last year, Sephora also launched their invitation-only subscription service called Play. Um, that uh, box includes what they call a curated selection of, of deluxe products. And, and what's interesting there is that they are using, they give you a Play Pass that drives you back into the store to get even more experience um, and one-on-one and -on -one help with someone in a Sephora location. Um, even Walmart's getting in on the act for five dollars. Um, consumers can receive a seasonal beauty box, uh, which contains mostly samples, um, but a few full-size products that are sold at Walmart, of course. Um, the five dollars, interestingly, the five dollar fee isn't actually for the products themselves, but it's for the shipping. The, the products are, are are considered free since most of them are samples. So brands do have the opportunity to go to go to Walmart and get their products included in these seasonal boxes. Um, but then, you know, again, with Unilever, like many CPG companies, uh, you know, they've struggled to develop relationships directly with, with consumers since they, you know, they almost always have to go through a middleman. So in acquiring Dollar Shave, uh, they get access to a well-established direct-to-consumer channel, but they also get all this um, insight into Dollar Shave customers' behaviors since the brand launched in 2013. Um, in, in addition, you know, I think in, in almost as important is that they have you know, a Trojan horse, if you will, in these boxes that are going out to, to, to their customers every, every month or, or however often the person chooses to get them, that Unilever can use to provide some of these samples of other Unilever products, like maybe Dove, Dove Men. Um, they can start to offer them samples and then add them on to the list of products that people can buy um, from, from Dollar Shave through, directly from Unilever as opposed to going, in, going through that, that retailer. But in the immediate future, of, you know, making, driving this back to holidays, um, retailers may be interested in considering something like a, cons a subscription box as an alternative to a gift card. Um, obviously, gift cards are pretty much, you know, one and done type of purchases. But if you have something like a subscription box, you could, um, you know, something similarly priced to what your gift card ranges uh, fall into. It could be a 
delivering a more curated and personal offering, both for the recipient as well as reflecting well upon the gift giver. Um, and hopefully that would result in, in a future sales uh, coming in over months instead of just once during the, the holiday season. Uh, moving on to our next um, trend to watch uh, along the lines of the subscription box transport, you know, personalization. We're also seeing uh, a seasonal rise in the demand for personalization uh, year over year. In fact, that 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 search has grown. In fact, last um, last holiday season, we saw searches for personalized and customized products were about 30% higher than they were in 2014. And you know, it really gives you an opportunity to promote these types of products and experiences over, over the holiday season. Um, our HitWise search data provides even more detail about the types of products that people are looking for. Um, for instance, we saw personalized photos and cards uh, were really among the most common in terms of you know, the, the types of the t products that, they're, that people are looking for. Um, people are also looking for including the, the recipient in their searches, so for him, for men, for boyfriend. Um, were, were also commonly mentioned. Um, but you know, in order to really personalize your personalization strategy, you have to know who's behind those searches. So we, we took a look at, um, at the people conducting those searches in our audience view platform. And the first thing we saw is that you know, demand for these personalized and customized products are really heavily driven by women in a, in a big way, um, which isn't really much of a surprise given what we just talked about it. They're looking for, for him, for boyfriend, for men. Um, but what's also quite, quite interesting is um, you know, they're a pretty lucrative uh, audience. Consumers who are, who are conducting these searches um, are more likely to say that you know, I go shopping frequently. Um, people come to me for advice before buying new things. I'm good at convincing others to try things. So they're, they're kind of leading edge and influential shoppers. So you know, people might ask them where they got some of these unique gift items. They also um, are a little bit more uh, affluent than average with um, incomes, those falling in 75000 and, and higher, um, being more likely to search for these items. We also see a, a, um, a bump in the middle income range with 40 to 50K households, also uh, about 23% more likely to look for personalized um, gifts and, and customized gifts. So again, Obviously, the holiday season is a, the, the peak time to offer some of these types of products, but um, what's also really nice is that you can break them out during Valentine's Day and graduation and other times of the year, um, not, just at, not just at Christmas. And so we're going to wrap up by um, looking at a few ways to um, make a more relevant or you know, audience-centric experience for your customers. We just talked about personalizing your personalization strategy. Let's talk about how you can um, personalize your strategy uh, year-round and through additional touch points. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, gift guides are, are becoming really increasingly important, and, and media companies, publishers, are, are among those that are most likely to provide these, these types of gift guides. But in order to, to inform their editorial team, um, the types of gift guides that they should be generating. They need to understand what people are looking for and who's searching for them. We did an analysis last year and we saw that gifts for men were the most popular, quote unquote, gifts for men. Um, mentioned in about 8% of gift guide searches followed by gifts for mom and her and dad. Uh, we also found a lot of searches uh, looking for gifts for someone of a certain age, often you know, a child, for instance, uh, gifts for 12-year-old boys. Uh, was the most common variation. In fact, like pretty much tween age, teenage boys were the number one target in terms of an age range um, of people looking for, for gifts for that age group, which is probably a hard group to buy for. Um, likewise, we, we also took a look at um, the, the searches and found that people mentioned uh, you know, lovers or, people, you know, for instance, um, lovers of books or lovers of wines and and we also saw people mentioning cats and beer and coffee and music and and even gun lovers right were were, were commonly called out in some of these searches so this will give um, those those publishers information that they can use to start putting some of these gift guides together um, we also took a look at who's behind those searches obviously um, based on some of the the, the recipients that we weren't surprised to find that they were more likely to be female. But we also took a look at um, what types of publishers they're visiting. Um, we found that 
they are more likely to visit sites like BuzzFeed and MarthaStewart.com, Mental Floss, and, and even the Today Show section specifically on MSNBC um, are, are, have a high concentration of people who are looking for gift guides. So these are a few of the leading publishers uh, that should be considering developing gift guides uh, for, for the holidays ahead. Next, uh, we have another great example that we found uh, looking at by, by segmenting or pro providing a profile of people who looked for uh, the Nutribullet last year online. And Nutribullet was, by the way, another one of the, the hot products last year, though it didn't fall into like the top 10. Um, and you know, while it's, it shouldn't be a really big surprise that the audience has a, uh, has a skew towards female, you know, it's, it's, it's actually not so heavily female as you might expect. In fact, 47% were men. Um, so knowing this, you could create an opportunity here for retailers and manufacturers to, to kind of start targeting men both you know, in, their, in their direct consumer marketing, but also in kind of the video product and, and messaging. In fact, um, when we were looking at all of the content that we could find on Nutribullet online, it was more than two thirds or, or, or three quarters of it was, were, look, were featuring women. And in fact, I think this one picture is one of the few that I found where they even featured a man. He's barely, uh, barely a head and a neck in this picture. So it could really be an opportunity to identify things like, um, you know, the gender of the people per portrayed in the, in the product collateral, but also things like uh, colors and even the content um, associated with the product to help the consumers make the most out of their purchases. And um, finally, I'll wrap up. Marketers can take this audience-centric approach to more effectively cross-sell and upsell. And since it's an election year, I thought I'd end um, on, an, on a fun note here and illustrate um, how you can identify cross-sell and, and upsell opportunities uh, for, for Trump supporters and for Clinton supporters. And we looked at that using, um, using audience views for people who have searched for things like um, Trump bumper stickers and hats um, and Hillary um, merchandise. We, we created these audiences and, and then we looked at the searches that they conducted in the in the retail space to see which ones um, were disproportionately more popular. So you'll see here uh, that the Trump the Trump supporters are more likely to be searching for things like the Sonos Play One speaker and the Vitamix 7500 uh, Craftsman tools and baseball gloves. And I am not I'm really not kidding you. Um, they also are more likely to look for retaining wall blocks. Um, so I guess like, presumably they're going to build that wall themselves. Um, among things that Hillary Clinton supporters are disproportionately um, more likely to be searching for are the Wii U, uh, PlayStation 4, Otter, OtterBox, like um, smartphone protectors, the Garmin Vivo Fit, and uh, the Dollar Shave Club. But you know, I obviously don't want to end on, on a note of division. I wanted to point out uh, that the Fitbit Aria is, is one product that both candidate supporters are, are searching for at above average rates. So I put it here in the middle and, of course, in purple. Um, so, do you want to just wrap up with a few takeaways and top tips, and, and starting with the fact that Thanksgiving is, is really the biggest online shopping day of the year now, so you don't have to wait for Black Friday to get some early sales on the books, but also just take advantage of that day to provide information on what's to come and what customers should expect over Black Friday and Cyber Monday ahead. Next, social is back as a driver of retail visits, so explore using action buttons in your social campaigns now so that they're ready for the holiday season ahead. Uh, next, take a mobile first approach. 2016 is going to probably be the first mobile holiday for many uh, online retailers and they need to make sure that when they're developing content it's optimized for mobile devices and prioritize that content around those searches that skew most heavily towards mobile devices. Next, stay on top of consumer trends. We talked about all the hot products and all the hot uh, categories. Online search is one of your best resources for that insight, and it changes on a week-to-week -week basis. So come back to Hitwise. We, we typically monitor that on a weekly basis, and we'll provide you with regular updates once the holiday season begins. Um, and finally, know your audience. Obviously, go beyond the most obvious um, things that you know about them to create messaging, offers, and content um, that engage your audience's full range of interests and lifestyles. So with that, I'll turn it back to Keisha and see if we had any questions, see if we have time for any, actually. Thanks, John. Um, great presentation. So um, we're going to begin answering some of the questions that were submitted so far. So um, the first one that's come through um, wants to know, how are you tracking the hot products you mentioned earlier? 
So for the hot products, um, we've actually been building this portfolio within Hitwise over the past few years, just looking, actually, I think it's, we've been building it for over five years. So it's got, you know, tens of thousands of different products in there. Um, and we just track that on a weekly basis to see which ones are the most, are the most product, popular each week. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, so I don't think uh, we have any more questions that come through or uh, realize we've gone a little bit over time, but um, thank you, John. And, and thanks everyone for attending today. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you will receive a follow-up email with a link to the recording, um, also slides and uh, a copy of the report we've got as well. So thanks for joining us today and have a great rest of your day.